Support for this program is provided in part by Widow's Fresh Marketplace. Welcome to The Natural Cook. I'm Anna Gershenson. Thank you for joining our show today. And I want to introduce you to my very special guest. We're really very fortunate to have Aaron Oster Thanks. of the AOK Barbecue, the Berkshire Barbecue Thank that you. absolutely rocks. Thank if you, you haven't been there, please head to North Adams, Mass Mocha. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, Aaron, you're a fascinating person. Thank you very much. <laughs> when I heard your story, yeah. I was so excited, first of all, that our, um, somehow our biographies, our contacts crossed. Yeah, it's, so almo it's almost like we're related. Exactly. Yeah. And when we came to eat your barbecue and yeah. I asked you whether we, you wanted to come and be a guest on my yeah. show, you right away said, yes, of course. So yeah. he came here from <laughs> North Adams, really yeah. far away. <laughs> Not too far away, please go there. Yeah, that's right. And today we are not going to make meat. No, that's right. Yes, we thought that um, there are some vegetables that people don't really know what to do with. Right. However, um, this is an expert and well. he'll show you what to do with them. And uh, very easy, very quick, something you can make uh, in advance or you can eat right there and leave further yeah, to eat, right. you know, uh, uh, during the week. And also the most delicious bread that is made by his wife, Alex, who is a co-owner yep. together with Orion. Yep, that's right. And um, we are in for a treat. So um, please uh, start cooking. Tell us what we are making. And My in turn. the meantime, yeah. I will be... Um, You'll be my assistant. Honestly. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So, so yeah, you're right. Uh, barbecue is our main focus, yes. and we're we're super excited to make our own version of barbecue. As we bonded quickly over this, I'm a yes. Russian-Hungarian uh, yes. lineage, and my wife is Australian, so yes. we have no connection with the South. But um, you know, we figured we could put our own little twist on it. Yes. Uh, and so. Uh, our brisket, our chicken, our homemade sausage, uh, pulled pork, ribs, those are all the things that we sort of really focus on. But we also have a pretty wide selection of vegetarian and vegan options. Mm -hmm. And so I thought if we were going to get the word out about AOK, -okay, maybe we could showcase a few things that are off, maybe uh, attractive to an entire different demographic. Yes. Who maybe love vegetables, but they would never go to a barbecue restaurant to get it. Absolutely. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make our yam witch. Yes. So. So yam, which if you could have guessed, of course, it sounds it's like made yam, with yams. and it is yam. <laughs> it is yummy. But it yep. is made with um, yams, and uh, besides yams, we have here a lot of other vegetables yep. that you might not want know what to do with, like collets, for example. You probably wouldn't use them. No, but um, for this recipe, right. we like to um, we like to to keep things all in the same sort of flavor profile. Right. So brown sugar is more or less through it. Those warm winter spices this time of year exist in a lot of recipes. Mm -hmm. Cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, they're in a, a bunch of our sausages as well too. Uh, you may not you may not taste it up front, but it's sort of in the background. Yes. So uh, what we're going to make is this yam which which has become pretty popular. Right. So first we're going to make the marinade which you can make ahead of time and because yes there's no real water in this recipe. Mm -hmm. It can sit in the fridge for a, a good long time. It can be used for chicken, it can be used for pork, for fish, whatever you want to use it for. Great. I've taken some cinnamon. Yes. I've taken some ground cumin. Yes. Some freshly cracked black pepper, some garlic. This uh, Turkish chili, is silk, silk yes. chilies. Yes. Which are great. And I'm going to put a little bit in, a little bit more in there because I like it to be a little bit spicy. Yes. We've got some brown sugar in here as well too. Yes. All right. And I'm going to get a little bit of extra virgin olive oil right here. You can use regular oil if you want to. Extra virgin just means that it's the first pressing. So it's got all that extra flavor and spiciness to it as well too. Yes. And a little bit of this maple syrup. This is pretty sweet. 
Not too much, maybe a little bit more. Yes. I'm gonna put a little bit more oil in here. And then if you don't have, if you don't have gloves. Right. You can use a plastic bag, and that's what right. we're going to do today. Yes, I so actually use sandwich bags yeah. instead of gloves, which I don't have here. But sure, right. but for marinating things yes. like this, it's great. Yes. Now, you don't need to marinate these sweet potatoes very long. Yes. Um, they actually can go, you'll see they'll go right in. This is real time here, right into the oven. So I'm going to mix this marinade up. Mm -hmm. Anna, could you cut one of that, that, that large sweet potato into rounds about a half an inch thick? Mm -hmm. So you see... Um, half an inch, okay. So we we don't really even peel it, right? No, I want to keep it. It's just been washed and that's it. Right. I like a little bit of that texture on the outside. Also, what's good about it is that you have extra fiber. Yep, that's and right. And as I always preach that um, most nutrients are right under the skin and in the skin of the vegetable or fruit. That's right. Yes, so you are getting all the nutrition you can possibly get. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. That's perfect. All right. Okay. Now we're just going to demonstrate one sandwich, but you can make this ahead of time. You can make a bunch of these. Um, I'm going to I'm going to take four of these are fine. Yes. And you've also got a, a rutabaga here. Well, oh, sorry, this a, a, one a is purple top purple turnip. Top, but rutabaga would be really a great uh, turnip to use because it's starchier yep. and it's um, actually more delicious. This yeah. is more watery. Yeah, a little bit more water content. Yes. Not bad. In yes. fact, you could actually roast those, which what we're going to do here with just a little bit of salt and pepper and extra virgin olive oil on those instead of adding all of this extra moisture to it. And we're just coating these on both sides lightly. The sweet potatoes have all their own sugar and starch in them and they have all their, their own natural flavor, which we don't want to hide. Right. Okay. And this is, this is, um, as you saw, that the, the spices were warm spices, and these are root vegetables. And this is really a great kind of food to eat in the winter because it's cold outside, you feel chilly, you want to make sure that you are warm from the, insi from the inside out. That's right. And so that is these warm spi warming spices and um, the roots that uh, have contractive energy versus, you know, leafy greens. For example, mm -hmm. when I found that I had problems with my circulation, yep. I stopped eating lettuces during the winter. Mm. I focused on roots and something that grounds you yeah. actually helped me keep warm and regulate my warming mechanism. Yep. So remember that. So, uh, this is these recipes, and yes. we it's, we have recipes for everything that we do at AOK. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. for the home cook, these everything is designed to be understandable and accessible mm -hmm. for uh, for for AOK because we don't hire people with with previous experience. Right. So we want them to understand that this is there is a process, there is a weight, there is a measurement. However, it's simple. Yes. Right. This is not a complicated thing. Yes. And this okay. is what we want you to remember. That's right. So yes. these are now ready to go in the oven. Okay. Uh, we've got some with salt and pepper and extra virgin olive oil, and we've got some with our garlic and brown sugar and, and cumin and cinnamon. These mm -hmm. are going to go in the oven at 350 mm -hmm. for about uh, 20 to 25 minutes. Yes. You can check. Yeah. You know, you can check to see. Do you need to flip them? No. Nope. No, no, no. You don't need to no flip them. Just check nothing. them after about 20 minutes with a fork. If your fork goes very easily into the center of them, yes. they're ready to go. Okay. All right. So now while that's cooking, we're going to start to prepare our collards. Yes. Okay. Now I love greens like this. Yes. So much. So, yes. so much. Yes. And um, actually, can I get two of those onions, please? Yes, sure. And there should be a couple pieces of peeled garlic in there as well, yes. too. Beautiful. Okay. Gorgeous. So, so these. I know that um, there is another, you know, an, um, another vegetable that we are kind of introducing here that people might not know much about, and that's daikon radish and watermelon radish. And I know that you probably, when you go to the market, like for example, you know, um, if you don't go to farmers markets, which we encourage you to do, because in the Berkshires we have wonderful farmers mm. who are growing things for you totally. that don't have to be transported distances. That uh, these preserve their nutrients. Yes, it's not like you know the leafy greens that lose their nutri nutrients quickly. And um, you can go to, to winter markets. Actually, there will be one in Great Barrington this Sunday. Ooh, great. So. Um, you should go and you can find, I don't know about watermelon radish, but definitely purple daikon comes from a farm in uh, New Lebanon. 
and um, I'm in love with daikon. Oh, me too. Yes, and daikon, uh, exactly. all of these vegetables happen to be cruciferous vegetables. Oh, beautiful. And you know that cruciferous vegetables really are very, very potent fighters. Um, you know, atherosclerosis or heart disease or mm. cancer. Like, this is what you need to do. I know that. Um, yeah. Food now is being prescribed by more progressive doctors 100%. as medicine. Right. And these kind of vegetables that are available this time of year, yes. you know, historically speaking, are meant to be eaten in this time of year as well, right. too. So like these yes. root vegetables, uh, you know, the, the radishes, the cabbages, the collards, the kales, this dark, super heavy leafy greens with tons of minerals and nutrients. You know, they're, they've evolved to help us get through the cold winter. So, Absolutely. So uh, I've got some extra virgin olive oil yes. getting here on, on a hot pan, and I've got some okay. garlic that I've just crushed right. with the edge of my knife. Yes. So that's just going to go in there and start to work. I've got some, uh, some small yellow onions that mm -hmm. I just cut up. Mm -hmm. Now, I've cut them. Mm -hmm. This is a trick yes. that I was taught, yes. but again, it doesn't matter how you do it. I just yes. like to do it this way. Yes. I'm going to cut them yes. lengthwise this right. way, as opposed to, you see, there's these yes. lines on yes. there on the onions. Yes, yes, yes. And when I slice them this way, they keep their integrity. Exactly. And so that I still have strains of it. If I cut them across, they start to break down and right. they become kind of mushy. Right. Now, mushy onions are good, but for my purposes today, that's not what I'm looking okay. for. Okay. Okay. Yes. So now my garlic is toasting. I'm going to throw my onions in here. Yes. I'm going to move that around, turn the heat down to about a medium. I've got my little wooden spoon here. Okay. And you can hear, you can hear, you know, I always say that all your senses have to be present when yep. you are in the kitchen. Yes. You need to smell, you need to hear, hear see, see, touch. Touch, yes. So I've got about uh, about three tablespoons of butter here, which okay. I'm just going to let in there. Right. That's going to add some more flavor and a little bit more excuse me, a little more richness into this dish. That's melting beautifully. I, lo I love butter and nothing flavors things like butter. Oh Remember Julia Child was oh promoting yes. butter all her life and then they forbade us to eat butter, which is really good for you. But if you're vegan, you can substitute uh, olive oil. Yes, 100%. Right. This dish is um, at AOK -okay, is vegetarian. It uh, could very easily be vegan. We could just exclude the butter. Right, right. So I've just got some cracked black pepper in here, mm -hmm. some salt to help break down the onions and yes. give a little bit of flavor. Yes. This smells incredible. Yes, it if does. If I do say so myself. I wish okay. you were here with us. Okay, so now the collards themselves. Now, you can do a couple different things. Yes. You can take the stem of it and you can sort of break the leaf off here and then right. just pull it out. Right. This is the sort of uh, woodier, more fibrous stem. Now, these are also delicious to eat. Right. For this recipe, to keep it as simple as possible, I would say to, to people, just yes. snap the bottoms off, right. the parts r way close to the bottom. Yes. And then everything else would be super, right. super, super easy. Yes. And you can actually, um, if you're making a, veg uh, a vegetable stock, you can oh save goodness. them. Yeah, save these. Do I, not throw them away. I even, I even suggest that people gather, you know, different things. The um, reason different uh, like discards and put them into totally. Um, totally. into a freezer even. The and bottoms then, of broccoli, right. the bottoms right. of cauliflower, exactly. those can all be cooked with onions and a little bit of garlic and this yes. can be pureed into a soup. Delicious. Right. But for this, the problem is that these will take longer to cook than the yes. leaves will. Right. So if we cook this at the same time, the yes. leaf will be mush by the yes. time that we're ready to eat it. Yes. So I'm gonna put these in our little discard pile there. Okay. So you the collards <laughs> are cooking. Yes. Remember also that this, this dish, it's, it's kind of like has southern origin, right? Collards are, are eaten and grow uh, in, the, in the south a lot. Sure. And, and so they cook them for a long time. So don't be, don't be intimidated because mm. they don't need you to be standing there no. and, and watching them or no. even stirring maybe once Absolutely. in a while, right? Absolutely. Now, you can rip these up by hand. Yes. Uh, if I was making a salad, Right. Right, a fresh salad, mm -hmm. I would not cut the, the lettuce. Yes. When I cut it, I cut across the cell, it starts to wilt. Right. And then it doesn't look so good. But for exactly. this, it's going to get cooked anyway. I'm not Absolutely. worried about it. Absolutely, yes. Okay, so these are cut. They're going to go right into the pot. Yes. And it's pretty hardy anyway. Yep. It's not, it's not like lettuce. I'm going to add a little bit. Part. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Yes. Just a little bit. This is what I always preach. Every time you add an ingredient, add salt. Yep. Right. I'm going to add a little bit of water. Yes. So I will post this recipe, I will downsize from, from the big 
big, huge thing that mm -hmm. uh, that Aaron makes. I sent a lot. Yeah, I, right. sent, I sent the recipe. I'm afraid with the the, uh, with the the quantity for three cases of collards, <laughs> exactly. which is a little bit more than I think that we need to make today. Yes. So I've added a little bit of chili. Yes. Um, I've got the butter in there. I've got the salt. I've got the pepper. Uh, I've got the collards now yes. in there and some water. Mm -hmm. These are going to wilt slowly, mm -hmm. and I'm going to add just a little bit of red wine vinegar. Okay. Now you can add any kind of vinegar that you like. Yes. You can add rice wine vinegar. You can add um, apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. These are going to wilt, and they're going to cook for about an hour and a half to two hours. Mm -hmm. You want to so. look at them every 30 minutes or so, and then see see where they're at. And keep tasting them, and they yes. sh they should they should really melt in your mouth yes. with a good amount of flavor. And don't be shy. Yes. Don't be shy with the seasoning. Okay. So now this is the sort of the view into the professional cook's life, right? Now we've got two things cooking at once right now, yes. obviously. Yes. We're, we're trying to maximize our time. Right. We're going to make our coleslaw for yes. our sandwich today. Yes. So um, if you're comfortable, uh, mm -hmm. I'll show you how I'd like this to be sure. cut. We've got a piece of, of green cabbage here. Yes. Uh, we split it in half and we've cut the core out. Right. Then I'm going to cut this piece in half like this. Mm -hmm. And I like to, mm -hmm. I like to separate a few of these leaves here mm -hmm. then press it on the table and then just make thin strips. Okay. Now I'd say probably we only need about one half. Yes. So your, your strips are not as thin as I usually do it. Well, you know, you're a better cook than I am, Anna, so I want you to, Who says? to show off a little bit. You show the you folks at home. I'll have, to, I'll have to make food for you. Please. Maybe we'll have a competition. Perfect. Right. All right, I'm going to take this bowl from behind you. We're going to add my terribly thick cabbage. And now you're going to put your, your beautifully thin, gorgeous, perfectly julienne cabbage in there. <laughs> And By then, the, yes. And then I'm going to take some of this purple daikon. Yes. Now, I love this little trick here. Okay. Uh, which is I like to use my vegetable peeler as a, instead of my knife. Yes. So I'm going to peel the outside layer because it's a little bit too fibrous okay. for a radish. Okay. Okay. Yes. I'm going to expose an area of this. And then I'm going to make slices like this. Do you see this gorgeous color? Long, beautiful slices, this just like this. These are, I mean, it's a gorgeous yes. flavor, great color, looks great on the plate, right? And then in this time of year as well, too, there isn't a lot of variety in color, right? So it's kind of nice to have something that you can get from the farmer's market that has this beautiful color because typically in the wintertime, you're looking at browns right. and dark greens and yes. yellows. Yes. A little bit of purple is kind of an exciting thing. So we're not going to use all of it, but I'm just going to show you this cool little trick. Mm -hmm. So we've got these beautiful thin strips. Yes. And we can either put them in just like this, or if we want, we can just make nice thin slices on them. I think it's a good idea to make slices. Yep. We take this, and we'll fold this into there. Now, Anna, if you can start to mix that together, I'm going to add the next two to three ingredients here. Mm -hmm. Now, our coleslaw is signature by the use of caraway. We yes. didn't invent it. We just like to have right. this, this this beautiful flavor. They just they just go well together. Caraway and cabbage is uh, perf perfect. Oh my goodness, it smells marriage. so good. Yes. I grew up eating in these Jewish delis ah, as a God, kid. Oh my God, this smells so good. all these so pickled good. vegetables and it's, this just reminds, takes me right back. I actually make Swedish uh, cabbage caraway soup. Oh yeah, yes. absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so we've got some salt, I've got some caraway. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of white sugar in there as well, too. Yes. Just a little bit, because the cabbage is actually sweet. Yes. I mean, you may not think so. You may not think of cabbage as being sweet, but it is. Very sweet. It's got a lot of sugar in there. Yes. I'm going to clean up my little station here. We have a lot of sweet, sweet vegetables here today. And I'm going to take a little bit of the cilantro. Right. And this is just going to go in here for a little extra added flavor. Now, cilantro can be grown indoors all year round, so this isn't necessarily out of season. And I'm, I'm not separating it from the stems. I want the stems in there, too. Yes. There's so much flavor in there. It's not like parsley stems. No, although parsley stems are good for your breath. Okay, good to know. Yeah, well, that's what my dad used to say. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, so now we've got this beautiful, this beautiful coleslaw. And there's only one more ingredient to add, which is apple cider vinegar. Okay. Now, this time of year, having apple cider vinegar is great for great for your stomach, it's great for your immune system. Yes. And we love to have it in here. So I would say, don't be shy with it, not too much. You can always add more. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yes, I love making 
coleslaws. Me too. And um, using purple cabbage mm. is great as well. Oh yeah, well. That's, that's true. We could have used purple yes. cabbage today as well. Right. All right, so I've got this beautiful ciabatta that Alexandra made. Yes. Um, and we put our sandwiches on a variety of breads. We have a brioche that we made, but that has butter and eggs and dairy in it, so we don't, that's not the vegan. But this ciabatta is just flour, water, and yeast, and salt, and that's it. It's a pretty magical little piece of bread here. So this would get toasted on our griddle. So I'm going to put one of these, I'm going to put this in the oven for a few minutes. Okay. While we just taste yes. what we got going on here. You actually want to have something with, with more texture mm. in this kind of sandwich because... Um, the sweet potatoes are so soft, they're so... Yes, brioche, brioche is, has really very soft, fine crown, mm -hmm. and it's more like a pastry. That's right. And this is real bread, and you want to bite into something and chew. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit of TV magic here. Okay. And these are our collards that are ready to go. And Anna, if you wanna pass me, here, I'll give you this towel here. Thank you. I'll grab this plate. Yeah. Okay. So we've got this beautiful slaw, which theoretically you could just eat this just like this. This is a great salad. For so, this time of year. so you don't you don't add any onions or you know anything like that. We can add some onions. Yep. Right. Let's do that. Actually, yeah, I, think I, love I think the recipe actually I gave you had some onions, and yes, I think I, I almost forgot. Yes, I love even red, uh, adding red onions because the more color in your vegetables, totally. the better it is for you. That's what we have to remember as well. You're you're a wonderful host because I was about to I was about to say that we we're finished with this coleslaw, and I forgot to put the coleslaw in there. Yes. I forgot to put the onions the in. The onion there. in it. Okay. Okay. So, again, cutting the same way. Yes. And they will be actually pickling there yep. because there is, uh, there is uh, you know how uh, red pickled onions um, mm. have become like such an in thing yes. some time ago and um, you just add vinegar to the, to the thinly sliced red onions and let them sit. That's right. And um, you have, you can leave them overnight and then you can keep them in the refrigerator mm. for a long time and add them to your salads, to your sandwiches. What's even better is that after this cabbage and onions, thank you very much, macerate yes. for a couple days in the yes. fridge if you don't yes. eat it all, right. the liquid that comes from the bottom, save that, you can use that to make the next batch of coleslaw or you can drink it. Yes. If you're feeling a little sick. It's a tonic. Yep, absolutely. Why why go pay for kombucha, right? That's right. You have your own at home if you're cooking. Okay, so I've got some um, I've got some mm. sweet potatoes that I've roasted before and some uh, some of the purple top turnips as well. Anna, could you mix that up a little bit? Absolutely. And I've got these beautiful collards, which are ready to go. I don't know if you can see this, but this smell is magic. Ah. Oh. It is. Now, I, I would love to take credit for this recipe, but I can't. Uh, one of, my, one of our, our team members, Jared Claff, came up with this recipe, and mm -hmm. he's an absolute rock star. He made this, and we were all just sort of very quiet for a well, while. Because we were in love with him even more after he made this. You, you, you need to be able to find rock stars, right? That's true. It's but not right. It's good. We're very we, lucky. We all have our own talents, but finding people with talent to be near us and create something with love mm -hmm. is very special and this is what I always talk about that when you cook leave all your bad emotions outside yeah, absolutely. come to the kitchen and well even Alex won't yes. she won't go into the kitchen in the morning to make bread without having a bit of like a taking a breath meditation and being a little bit of meditation right. because you know Yes. She's not wrong when she says that what she's doing is magic. It truly is, it is. making bread. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so, you know, I don't want to spoil anyone's day, but the truth is is that the recipes that we make, like I said, are really meant to be easy. They're really meant to be very straightforward and flavor focused. So I've got some collards on the plate. Mm -hmm. I may also put some of this beautiful slaw that we made on the plate too, because I think it just looks great. Yes. We could easily do this as well too. So I take a little bit of this, these collards yes. and place it on there. If you want to put some pickles so on there, you can put some pickles on there as well, too. So there will be a little more texture there, That's which right. is fine. And a little bit of juice as well, too. Yes. Take these three beautiful pieces, so tender, right here. A little bit of slaw right on top of the sandwich. And that's our yamwich right there. Mm. It looks gorgeous. I'm going to put this right over here on the yes. edge of this beautiful table. Yes. 
Ah. It's meant to be simple. You know, all the food that we're preparing at AOK Barbecue, yes. whether it's our 14 hour slow smoked brisket, whether it's our donuts that we make on Sunday morning, whether it's the baguette, the yam witch, or just the homemade sausage, we try to keep things as limited and simple as possible. You know, I uh, had a mentor who said that, you know, when you have a great dish with five or six items, look at it and then remove three. Okay. You know, because then you're really getting to the core of it. And that means that you have to buy better ingredients. You have to do less with them and just let the ingredients speak for themselves. And speaking about that, I just wanted to let you know that, that Aaron really um, made his way to, to cooking because when he graduated from high school, he didn't know what, what he wanted to do. And a lot of you might connect with that. Yeah. And so he, he went to school and then he felt like he didn't belong there. That's right. And then he went into the kitchens washing dishes and then doing like the, the, the hard work yeah, I was that needs to be done in restaurants. I was lucky. You know, I, I was at the right place at the right time and I found a real home in the, in the culinary world. Yes. But I also, as the, the more I grew through this, I realized how vast the world is. Yes. And that, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's room in it for everybody. Absolutely. But yeah. the main thing is that um, Aaron came to the Berkshires with Alex because besides the love of making food, they have the love of community. Mm -hmm. The love of connecting with the community that in the Berkshires is very, very special. Yeah. So we both feel very grateful totally. that we ended up coming here because the, the, this feeling of connectedness has mm. inspired us to yeah. do something special here. It's incredible. Right, and connect, to connect with people. It's incredible. And you know, yes. our barbecue restaurant is on the campus of Mass Mocha, um, but it, were, it, it was through the meeting of, of the entire community of North Adams and Berkshire County in general. And Alex and I, um, who's my wife is Australian, uh, yes. we just did a fundraiser a few weeks ago for the bush for, for the bushfires yes and uh, within about five hours we'd raised about f over five thousand dollars yes and that's that was on a sunday morning yes um, it just it just goes to show that the community goes really out of its way to support one another um, and that's why we love living in the berkshires and and that's, that's, wh that's why, why we're proud to have our restaurant here everybody needs to remember that you count even right. though you are one person, don't think that you cannot change things because other people will join you. But I need to try this. Mm. I'm going for the slaw. That's my favorite. This is, oh my God, like all the flavors. First, the sweetness and mm. then the tartness and then the it's, you're hit by spice. Mm. And it, it just... Yeah, get your hands in there. Mm. And that's the move. Mm. So good. Oh my God. <laughs> You're killing me. Yep. Guys, you need to make this. Yeah, I think whoever's on the other side of this mic is hearing me chew. So I will definitely <laughs> post these recipes so that yep. you can be as excited about it as we are. Yep. And if you guys have any questions, um, you know, Anna, you can tell all your, all, all your followers they can follow us on, on Instagram or Facebook. And they can email us uh, info at AOKBBQ and we'll answer any questions. Perfect. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us and get into the kitchen and cook. See you next time. Support for this program is provided in part by Widow's Fresh Marketplace.